Hi, my name is Joan Vian. I'm with the Women's International Media Group, and for the last 15 years I've covered global meetings around the world, 108 to be exact. And it was at my first global meeting in Cairo in 1994, as I was reading the document that supported that particular conference in Cairo, I started noticing interesting language and terminology which I didn't understand. And then, as I continued to cover other global meetings, I started to see this phrase about public and private. And sometimes with public and private, they would talk about non-governmental organizations and foundations. They never, ever mentioned specifically corporations. And then it wasn't until the meeting that I went to in Istanbul in 1996 that the document was all about something called public-private partnerships. I was pretty amazed. What? What is a public-private partnership? And I didn't quite understand it in Istanbul, but I came home and I decided I would meet with somebody at the World Bank. And so I went down the street, since I live about an hour from the World Bank, outside of Washington, D.C. And I went to the World Bank and I started asking questions about what a public-private partnership was. It was pretty difficult, but I finally figured it out. Very simply, a public-private partnership is a way in which corporations, through a new entity called public-private partnership, take control of government assets. Very simply, they are taking control of government assets. And when I figured that out, I was absolutely amazed because public-private partnership was a concept plastered throughout the various United Nations conferences and their documents. And it was a concept that was also uh, talked about very openly after 1996. It was, if you will, the solution for government that is broke. And unfortunately, the real truth about public-private partnership is that, you can call it global corporate fascism, you can call it transfer of wealth, you can say that it uses deceit, deception, and distortion. You can call it the fleecing of a, the American tax paper, taxpayer. But public-private partnership is really a new structure for government. In 1999, I went to a conference at the State Department in Washington, D.C., sponsored by Al Gore. And he was holding the first global meeting on reinventing government. And I thought, my goodness, reinventing government? And one of the shocking things at that meeting was Al Gore was talking to other countries, the delegates from other countries who were at that meeting, and he referred to you and me, the taxpayer, the taxpayer, as customers. And I thought, my goodness, we have now become customers? And it was the terminology that made me realize again that we were talking the restructuring of government. Two years ago in 2007, I covered the seventh global meeting on reinventing government in Vienna. I wanted to see how far it had come, what kind of evolutionary change that they had come up with. And again, at the center of reinventing government was public-private partnership. So, what is a public-private partnership? Well, let's break down those three words. First, let's start with partnership. Partnership is a business arrangement. It is the most simple form of business. 
two people, or 12 people, or 50 people, or maybe three or four different organizations, whatever the entity is, it doesn't matter, come together and they form a, a business arrangement to do business. So, there are two types of partners, public and private. Public refers to government, all levels of government, local, county, state, federal, foreign, United Nations, all levels of government. That's public. Then you have private. The private partners are corporations, multinational corporations, big, powerful corporations, as well as foundations. At one time when William Jefferson Clinton was president, I laughed about how one day we might have the Slick Willie Foundation and he would form public-private partnerships for his own benefit. And interestingly enough, we now have the William Jefferson Clinton Foundation, and yes, he is part and parcel of many partnerships. So you have foundations, you can have universities, you can have associations, like the Timber Association, or the Automobile Association. Any association, any entity that has a lot of money. You can have the Rockefeller Foundation. And then there are non-governmental organizations, the NGOs. Most of the time you would have environmental NGOs, the Sierra Club, the Nature Conservancy, uh, any organization that has to do with the environment because after all, the real bottom line of a public-private partnership is to take control of the assets of government, local government, county government, municipal government, state government, and even federal government. So, what do you have? You have these three entities, the public being government, the private, which can be corporations, uh, along with foundations, along with non-governmental organizations, and they come together and they determine that they are going to buy, for example, a uh, sewer. You see, the city of Atlanta, Georgia, for example, let's just fly with this one. Atlanta, Georgia cannot afford to restructure, revamp their sewage system. And therefore, they go to the people, the citizenry, and they say, we're going to have to raise your taxes X amount of dollars in order to be able to afford to uh, restructure, revamp the sewer system. The citizenry says, we already pay too many taxes. We refuse to do this. And so they go back to the drawing board. And then, amazingly, they will come up with some innovative idea. You always look for that word, innovative. And sure enough, as you read through, they will talk about how, for example, Boeing Corporation is going to partner with the city of Atlanta and the state of Georgia to help with their sewer system. And of course the Nature Conservancy or the Sierra Club or one of them is going to come along as a non-governmental organization to help. And so pretty soon what really happens is the sewer system, which belongs to the taxpayers of Atlanta, Georgia, is transferred to this new partnership which is comprised of Boeing and the city of Atlanta and the state of Georgia and the Sierra Club to uh, help the citizens get a new sewer system. Now what happens in a public-private partnership besides the transfer of that asset? 
Well, the little old lady who receives her sewer bill goes into shock and calls up and says, I'm sorry, I can't afford this. What is going to happen? She is now going to be talking to someone who represents this new partnership. And what is their goal? Profit. No longer service, because that was the goal of government. And they will say, well, we're so sorry, but these are our new rates. Thank you very much. But what else has happened? That part of government that used to represent the taxpayers who bought that sewer system is now silent. And there is no representative government in a public-private partnership because the goal is not to serve the people. The goal is to make a profit at any price. And so over the years, what I have seen in many, many documents at every turn, even in the 2008 credit crises, what are you hearing? You're hearing the words public and private. They must come together. And whenever you hear that combination, public and private, they're talking public-private partnership. And so we have over uh, 70 years after John Maynard Keynes, who basically told Roosevelt that the way to get out of the Great Depression that would be to deficit spend, we now have every level of government, county, local, state, federal, all levels of government are broke. And therefore, they are now ripe to start selling their assets to these public-private partnerships. And what happens? The whole structure of government that our forefathers put in place starts to become diluted little by little by little until at some point we won't even recognize government. Is this a mistake? I don't think so. Not based on all the documents and the conferences that I've covered over the last 15 years. That there are also international public-private partnerships. And they will include, for example, the United States, uh, the United Nations, they can include maybe 10 or 15 other countries. Uh, they can include 1, 2, 10, 20 non-governmental organizations. They can include all kinds of associations and foundations and corporations. And there are now transnational public-private partnerships being set up worldwide. I would invite you to go to my website, womensgroup.org, W-O-M-E-N-S-G-R-O-U-P. Take a look at some of our information. Some of it is free, some you will have to send for. Uh, but we have a number of uh, books, for example, Prince Charles, The Sustainable Prince. That was my first book, and it was written all about sustainable development and public-private partnership. And then we have a follow-up called Sustainable Development, The Greatest Lie of the 21st Century. That talks about public-private partnership as well. It also talks about these global, transnational, public-private partnerships. Now, how do we fight it? We have to be alert. We have to be alert. We have to know what a public-private partnership is. And then we have to go to the meetings and we have to oppose it. I don't know how else to do it. You see, that little old lady who asked Franklin, as they were debating what kind of structure of government the 13 colonies would have, and she said, Mr. Franklin, what kind of government do we have? And he replied, Madam, you have a republic if you can keep it. And that is where we find ourselves today. Thank you, God bless you, and God bless America.